Part 2, Aligning Instruction. In Part 1 of this module, we reviewed some practices that help build strong instructional teams. Instructional alignment is most effectively achieved through instructional teaming, which produces precision planning. Teachers have a structure dedicated to support instructional alignment, differentiation, and refinement. Effective teaching. Instruction is strategic and aligned across and within grade levels. Improved learning. Student learning is focused, frequently assessed, and coordinated throughout each grade level and within each subject area. Curriculum is the driver of the instructional process. Curriculum is what makes school learning efficient. It organizes and sequences meaningful pieces of information that students should learn and apply. Standards and benchmarks help to gauge the pace of student mastery of the curriculum. Most districts have aligned their curriculum guides to state standards and benchmarks. Most textbook companies have followed suit. The gap between the written curriculum and the taught curriculum is the one that most often persists. Alignment is the process of matching up the written curriculum, which appears in district or school curriculum guides, the tested curriculum, which appears in classroom, district, and state assessments, the supported curriculum, which appears in textbooks or other classroom resources, and the taught curriculum, which you deliver to your students. Aligning the taught curriculum to the written, tested, and supported curriculum is the focus of Part 2, Aligning Instruction. Let's take a look at the first indicator. Instructional teams develop standards-aligned units of instruction for each subject and grade level. The unit of instruction is typically three to six weeks worth of work within a subject area that defines and aligns the following components state standards and benchmarks, district curriculum guidelines, school curriculum guidelines, standards benchmark-based objectives, criteria for mastery, unit pretest and post-test items, and leveled and differentiated learning activities. Instructional teams develop a plan for each unit and share it with all the teachers who teach that subject and grade level. Let's listen as these teachers explain their experience with developing and sharing units of instruction. We develop our plans week by week based on the units. We have arranged the spiraling curriculum into 10 units, and each unit has the standards listed in front that we're going to cover, and then the objectives and indicators that fall under those standards. Again, the same five standards that I've been mentioning. And what happens is you look at those standards and the materials and the um, worksheets that are in the workbook as well as the lab materials, again, match directly to an objective. And one of the things that we also do at our instructional team meetings is we sit down and discuss the validity of those worksheets. Did this worksheet really hit that objective and was it clear to the students? Did this lab, was it just fun? Did the kids just like it or did it really drive home the point of that objective? And so I think through our instructional teams, we continue to analyze not just our test results, but these instructional worksheets that we've created as well as the labs that we've chosen. And we do have flexibility. I don't want to give the impression that every one of our teachers is doing exactly the same thing on exactly the same day. We have great latitude within our week. Um, and in fact, functionally, we can't always do the lab on the same day because the materials are not able to be shared. So it really varies in terms of some teachers will do one lab and think it drives home the point better. Other teachers will choose to do a different lab. So we still have our autonomy, but again, we're driven right back to those standards. Did it achieve what we wanted it to achieve? Then we would take time and just work on our unit plan. What are our pretests going to look like? You know, how are we going to put those in there? What is our learning plan going to look like? How are we going to differentiate the learning? And so it kind of depends where we're at and what we're working on. You know, the first couple of meetings last year, we really spent a lot of time just aligning the standards to specific themes in our reading. Now, this year, we have some different, the district has some, given us some different ways to do that, and so we kind of revamped things. You know, it's constantly changing. And we have been working on, you know, we pretty much have all the standards aligned, so now it's basically working on those units. How are we going to accomplish this? What's the best way to do this? And working on 
setting up the prerequisite, the target, the enhanced activities, and looking at the learning plans, and looking at the, the pre and the post test. Both that high school teacher and elementary teacher highlighted for you how they utilize their instructional team meeting time to develop and share standards aligned units of instruction. The next few indicators will focus on the details of the unit plan. Before we go any further, let's take a look at this template which provides a way to organize and align all of the components of the unit plan. It follows seven steps for building a unit plan. These seven steps are reviewed more closely in your workbook, but we'll review them briefly here along with the template. Steps 1 and 2. The first two steps in developing a unit plan will help us to complete the top section and first column of the template. First, the instructional team determines the concepts, principles, and skills that the unit will cover, the units of instruction. Then, the team identifies the standards and benchmarks that apply to the grade level and unit topic. In some districts, a curriculum map or scope and sequence has already defined the unit topics and corresponding benchmarks. So let's take a look at this completed template. Across the top, you can see that the information has been completed for a third grade reading unit on effective communication. The unit of instruction code, 3R01, breaks down like this. The 3 represents the grade level. The R represents the subject, here reading. The 01 represents the unit sequence. The standard benchmark code A3 aligns to the standard that states, the student demonstrates understanding and control of the rules of the English language realizing that usage involves the appropriate application of conventions and grammar in both written and spoken formats. Step 3. Next, the team develops all objectives that clearly align to the selected standards or benchmarks. We spend more detail on how to develop SMART objectives in your workbook, so we'll move on to the examples now. You'll see in this example that both objectives are clearly aimed at the benchmark. Step 4. Once the objectives are developed, they need to be sequenced. In other words, the order of the objectives and related activities will build from one to the next. In this case, the unit plan requires that students write a proper sentence and understand sentence construction before they begin mastering punctuation. Step 5. Once the objectives are developed, objective descriptors are determined. In this case, sentence structure and oral reading. Step 6. Next comes mastery and the criteria that will measure it. Notice the reference to accuracy and quantity. Step 7. Finally, the pretest and post-test items. The pretest will offer a quick assessment of how far students are from mastery of the objective, and the post-test will confirm mastery attainment or inform that additional work is needed. Remember, there is additional content in your workbook that covers these steps in detail. Now let's take a look at those indicators. Units of instruction include standards-based objectives and criteria for mastery. Standards and benchmarks are established by the state or district and communicate what mastery of a particular concept or skill includes. They are the skeleton of the curriculum and will inform the development of objectives. Here's how one teacher explains the use of standards-based objectives and criteria for mastery within her instructional team. The team uses the data to create math reviews. Um, we look at particular items or strands and use, we have a percentage range that we use for reteaching a percentage range of things that would be included on a math review and a percentage of range for things that we have we feel the students have mastered. So we look at the data from the test, we can pinpoint it to a question type. It may be the wording of a question caused students not to master it. So we can go back and say, okay, was this a bad question the way that it was worded? Or is it a really good question and we just haven't pushed the students, we haven't increased the rigor to that level so that they understand and they, they can comprehend what those types of questions are asking. To assist instructional teams in matching units of instruction with the appropriate district or state standards and benchmarks, we created this Aligning Units to Standards template. Using the standards and benchmarks, 
will help ensure that the objectives are standards aligned. They will also assist instructional teams to determine what the target for learning within a grade level is. Select the verb that defines exactly what students should be able to do at that grade level and determine the level of student action they expect. Once these three points are defined, instructional teams are ready to formulate them into standards-aligned objectives. A target objective is specific and aimed at a benchmark and appropriate to the grade level, specific enough that it can be taught and mastered within a week, expressed as the student will be able to and then insert observable or measurable student action. And descriptive of the student's performance behavior, what the student shows he or she knows or can do. The objective states what the student will be able to do. The criteria for mastery gives the conditions under which the objective will be met and the level of accuracy that is expected. So, if our target objective reads, the student will be able to name the four primary directions on a navigational compass. Our criteria for mastery might look like this. Given a blank compass face, the student will write the name of the four primary directions on the correct locations. If the student solves 8 out of 10 or 80 percent, the teacher may decide that the student has mastered the objective but made a couple of calculation errors. Other objectives may not leave room for error. For instance, if the objective is for the student to write their name, the teacher may expect 100% accuracy. Once we've defined the standards-based objective and criteria for mastery, we're ready to build in activities that will support student attainment of the objective. This brings us to our next indicator. Units of instruction include specific learning activities aligned to objectives. Learning activities, the assignments given to each student targeted to his or her level of mastery, are carefully aligned with the standards-based objectives. These activities provide a variety of ways for a student to achieve mastery. Here, a principal explains how her teachers put this indicator into action, and then you'll hear directly from one of the teachers on this instructional team. In addition to taking time to look at the actual standard and break down the standard to make sure that we're aligned with it, our teachers work together to come up with activities that are aligned with the standard. It's so easy uh, when you have uh, teams such as we're fortunate to have here at our school. I consider myself to be a leader of leaders. Uh, we're very fortunate that we've gotten to the point where we have teachers who are committed to perfecting the craft. In doing so, it gives us a little uh, greater, greater sense in terms of uh, continuity with the actual standard. In the past, there would be a concern where perhaps we'd have an activity, this is a fun activity, the kids are really going to enjoy this activity, but what do our kids actually take away? from that activity. At this point with our team having had opportunity to work together for uh, some time now, we're able to see that the activities that have been developed are ones that are actually aligned with the standard. That is going to contribute to yields with student achievement. We've already started to see yields along those lines. Well, we get together as an algebra teacher. We all get together and we talk about which objectives we're going to cover and we come up with our essential questions, the objective, the um, strands that we're going to go through, and we share activities. Um, it's really good because some, when we have new teachers, we have a new teacher this year, so a lot of the activities she does not have, but being in with us, we can share our activities with her and show her how they're used to help her build an activity bank of her own. Um, it's good because we don't have to, I don't have to write a lesson plan every single day we to alternate and take turns using the plan because we use the same plan. So it makes the job easier and it's just the sharing part about it.